Transitioning to a new season is a great way to show the passage of time in your film. And no, you don't have to shoot in the same location at two different times of the year. Here's how to do it on a budget with the help of generative AI. Let's jump on in. There are only three steps to achieve this effect. The first one is to grab a still from our footage. In Premiere Pro, let's import our clip. For me, I got this nice drone shot from Envato. Now, usually if the scene is filled with snow, we would wanna create a seasonal time-lapse where that snow melts away. Now, normally this would require a lot of practical effects or CGI, but here's another way. Start by moving the playhead to the moment where you want the transition to start. Now we can press C on our keyboard to switch to the razor tool and we can add a cut here. Now this cut will be important later on. So up in the program window, we can press the camera icon to save this frame as an image. And step two is bringing this image we just exported into an image to video generator. In this case, I'll be using Envato's Video Gen. Here we can press the plus icon and upload the image. It's important to mention that there's also an option to generate an image just from text and an option to generate sound effects that go along with the video. Once we have our image uploaded, Envato will use this image as the first frame of the video. So for our prompt, let's start with a brief explanation about the scene and then write in how we want the scene to transform in detail. Also, since my original footage has some slow forward movement, make sure to add that into the prompt here so we can hopefully, and hopefully it's a key word here, get that same camera movement in our generated result. If you're new to prompting, the nice thing about Envato is that there is this enhance prompt feature, which does exactly what it says, enhance your prompt. As you can see, this feature adds a lot of descriptive language to the prompt. For example, when it sees a nature image, it will add words like untouched nature or ancient magical tree, which could be true or not true. It's just depends on your image, right? So I think it's best to use this feature to help you get an idea of what details to add to your prompt, but also trim out anything that isn't needed. And once you're happy, hit generate. Now I've done a bunch of generations off camera. So let's show you a few. For anyone that is new to AI generations, it's pretty rare that you get the best, most usable generation on your first try. Sometimes it does happen. Unicorns can happen. But as you can see from my generation history, I did a bunch before I found a few that work. So if it doesn't look amazing right off the bat, keep calm, analyze the results and adjust your prompts accordingly. So I'm gonna give you some tips for prompting. But first, let's take a look at another example here of the shot of this lone oak tree. Now I'm actually aiming for the opposite here. I want it to become winter with snow covering up all the trees and grass. And here are a few results that I like along with the prompt that I used. And here are a bunch of results that didn't work. So here are some tips that will save you some generations so you can get better results faster. Tip number one is to know the limitations of the tool that you're using. Since for this particular effect, we wanted it to basically transform the entire clip, it's important to use footage that's more simple. You want to avoid complex movements because if you use this effect on a video where there's a bunch of people moving around or a lot of camera motion, it's going to be hard to match that generation with the original footage later on. That's why I'm focusing on nature shots with simple camera movements. And just a side note here, thinking about the future, you know, if you can create this amazing transition, you can also think about compositing your characters later on with a green screen and then, you know, layering different color gradings and color matching tools to essentially create the scene from scratch using AI and green screen compositing. Tip number two. So for anyone that's trying to do a total transformation like we are doing, you wanna keep the description of your image brief and focus on the scene transformation. So for example, when I use the prompt enhancer here, it likes to add a really long description of the image. And that usually gets me a generation where nothing really happens, or maybe the transformation starts right at the end of the clip. So if the prompt is too long, the AI will focus on the first part 
of your prompt. And then the last part, which is the most important, becomes kind of an afterthought. Now, obviously, this is just a theory. I don't have a way of proving this, but with a lot of Gen AI tools that I've used, this has been a common thing. So we might be onto something here. Even though Envato's video gen isn't perfect and you are limited to five second generations, keep in mind that this technology is only getting better and better. And it's only a small part of what Envato offers. Me and my team have been using Envato for years and they offer so much from stock video to video templates to fonts images music sound effects i could go on the coolest part is is they offer so much that's useful for both pre-production and for post-production and now they have all these gen ai tools for example you can generate images videos like i've been showing you music voiceovers and more i personally like this image edit tool because i can upload my photo here highlight the parts that i want to change and then write in a prompt and here's my new image and this tool is a especially useful to those of you that don't own Photoshop. And the coolest part is that you get everything I mentioned and unlimited downloads by being an Envato subscriber. You can use my link down in the description box below to sign up and it helps support my channel. Thank you so much to Envato for sponsoring this video. And now let's get on to the last step. I've downloaded a couple generations that I like and let's import them into Premiere Pro. And we're gonna start my favorite step, the editing. So in the timeline, you can see that original cut that we made on that frame that we exported. That means that if I drag in the generated clip and I place it right after this cut, the two clips should line up perfectly. Well, maybe not perfectly yet because Envato's video gen can only do 720p as of now, well, a little bit higher than that. It's not 1080p yet. So in Premiere, we just need to select the footage and up in effect controls, we can scale up the video until it fills up the preview screen. And I would recommend if you have access to some upscaling tools to try to upscale a bit higher to see if that might help you out. And now we can hit play. You know, actually, I think it might be better if we start from the original AI generation and then transition to our stock video clip. So let's select both clips and let's press Control plus R or Command plus R on a Mac to open up the clip speed window. So let's tick reverse speed here and then press OK. Now we can move the AI video to the front instead. Let's also hold control or command and roll the cut point to the left just a little bit. This will let us add a short crossfade to help make the transition between these two clips a bit smoother. Another thing that would help blend these two clips together is to color match them. Usually the AI video will have a little bit more contrast. So let's go to the effects panel here and let's find Lumetri color and let's add it to one of the clips. In effect controls, we can do a little bit of color correcting. So that way we can try to get it to the point where we can hardly notice the shift in color between the two clips. The cool thing about using AI for this effect is it doesn't have to end with that one generation. So here I want the shot to end with the drone flying up into the clouds. So I exported the last frame of this clip and made another generation. And here it is. Let's plop it right at the back and let's play. You can see that the generated video has the drone moving back faster than the original clip. So let's select the real footage and press Control plus R or Command plus R. And here we can speed it up a bit. And now the speed matches way better. To glue it all together, I downloaded the snow overlay from Envato and let's place it above our clips. Now, luckily this overlay is already pre-cut, meaning that it has that alpha transparency, but if yours has a black background, make sure to change the blend mode to screen. And for me, I specifically want this overlay to show up only when it changes to winter, right? So let's select the overlay clip and let's press Shift D to add a fade to the start and the end. Then let's extend the fade a little bit. And for the end, I'll extend it by a lot because I want the snow to slowly disappear as the camera goes into the clouds. 
And since the camera is slowly moving back, let's also keyframe the scale of the snow overlay video. So what we can do here is scale up for the first keyframe and then have it slowly scale back down until the end of the clip. Now, obviously this isn't 100% realistic, but it does give you the illusion of the snow following the camera movements. Let's not forget about the lone oak tree generation. So I have this generated video in my timeline right now, and the only thing missing is the snow. So what we can do is drop in our snow overlay. And here's a tip for anyone that is using snow or rain overlays. What you can do is even if it's not a green screen background, you can use the ultra key effect on this clip. And what we are using this for is the choke parameter here. So that way we can make the rain and the snowflakes smaller and we can bump up soften to blur the edges a bit more. So doing this will lower the density of the snow or the rain. So that way it'll help blend the overlay in with the footage to make it less obvious that it's fake. For my generation, you can see that the snow kind of comes in from the right side. So to match the snow, let's select the snow overlay, go to effect controls and under opacity, add a square mask. In the program window, let's make the mask bigger. And I'll also move the bottom left corner to the left so our mask isn't in a straight line. Back in effect controls, let's bump up the mask feather by a lot so that way we can smoothen out the edges. Then I'll keyframe the mask path to have it come from the right in sync with the snow in the generated video. And here's the result. And here are some more. I actually really like this one with the frozen river. I think it turned out pretty cool. Now, obviously doing a seasonal change like this, the quality might not be up to par for a high budget film, right? But if you have a super low budget and you want to try this to create an establishing shot or show the passage of time, you can give it a try now and it could be perfectly fine for social media at this point. If you wanna learn more VFX that you can do with the help of AI, you can check out this video right over here. And if this video helped you out, be sure to give it a thumbs up and as always, keep creating better video with Gal. See you next time. Bye. Ooh.